Well, good morning. Great to have you here today. Uh, Thanksgiving, hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, uh, a lot of, you know, I was looking at the Dallas and I were looking at some funny things to maybe share with you on a Thanksgiving Sunday to kind of keep you in a happy spirit, uh, having just suffered through Thanksgiving. Um, you know, there's so many stories. I remember one story uh, of somebody uh, putting a frozen turkey into a deep fryer doesn't go real well. They kind of blow up, so that's not a good thing. You, you never want to do that. Uh, somebody else was so, I was talking to someone, and uh, uh, she was so excited at her first Thanksgiving, she made everything, but she forgot to put the turkey in the oven. <laughs> so that was special. And then uh, uh, some of you, I don't know if some of you have seen some of those stove cop, stove top commercials where they, uh, they have the, the, the pilgrim, the guy dressed like a pilgrim, and he's faking that he has scurvy because they don't have stovetop stuffing. Okay, anyway, I'm trying here. I'm trying. We're, we're going to share today. I'm going to be sharing scripture with you today, and uh, we're going to be having a roving mic. So I'd like you to think about something you may want to share that you're thankful for um, this morning, and uh, if you just want to do that, we're going to give you that opportunity. But, uh, you know... Um, I remember our first Thanksgiving, and uh, it was always, uh, it was very memorable, and some of you, some of you men who cook, I was talking to Matt, he likes to cook on Thanksgiving, and some of you guys like to cook, have you guys ever tried to cook and do something special and didn't work out well? Okay, well, some of you are honest, okay. Ladies, have you had train wrecks and preparing for a big meal, having the whole family over, and it's a train wreck? Well, I found a video clip of something that uh, I thought was kind of funny, and I just thought I would share it with you this morning. I'm going to ask for forgiveness in advance, uh, but um, this is kind of like uh, Thanksgiving turkey gone bad. And then, and then, you know, some of you too like to relax after Thanksgiving, you know, like you tell the family you know where the refrigerator is at the end of the day so you don't have to do anything. Anyway, you want to relax maybe after Thanksgiving. Well, we're just going to show this and hopefully you enjoy this. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I hope you weren't offended by that. But anyway, I just wanted something funny for this morning. Like I said, sometimes uh, holidays can be a train wreck. And so uh, anyway, I just want to give you a couple announcements now as we move to the serious side of worship this morning. Anyway, ladies' Christmas dinner, if you're ready for this, December 5th. And if you uh, could pay at the table out front, they would appreciate that. Also, we do need a couple of servers to help uh, with the meal uh, that evening as well, a couple guys, we would appreciate that. And then also after church, we're going to be setting up uh, for Christmas with Christmas decorations. They are, I believe, up in the front foyer in the closet, so we got to get a ladder. Anybody want to help with that? And we've got some people going to be helping with that. And, uh, and then on a serious side here, we want to pray for Leo. He had double knee replacement surgery, and then also for Judy Foster. So let's just start our time together with prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can come before you. We can laugh. We can cry. We can share uh, our feelings with each other. And also, Lord, uh, just your blessings that you have blessed us with so much. Father, we pray for Leo that you would help him as he's home now, recovering from a, a double knee surgery. Lord, he is in a lot of pain. And I believe they're trying to manage his blood pressure as well. So we pray for Leo today that you would help him. And also, Judy Foster is home. Uh, and has had pneumonia and been very sick. We just lift her up today as well, Lord, that you would help her uh, to get uh, her health back and to be feel, feeling stronger. And Father, as we uh, get ready to, as we are entering into the Christmas season and a time where we give thanks for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, and we give you thanks today, Father, for all that you have done for us, for this country that we live in, for the freedom that we have, for the opportunity to come together and worship on Sunday mornings. We really do praise you, and we do thank you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we, we're going to get started here. I'm going to be sharing some verses with you. But like I said earlier, if there's something that you'd like to share this morning, something maybe God has done in your life this year, or something you would just like us to even pray about, it, or a victory, uh, a victory, some encouragement whatsoever, please uh, feel free to do that. So I'm gonna, just going to start out with a couple of verses here. And uh, this is in First Chronicles 16 through 34. It's amazing when you start looking at Scripture how many verses there are, are, there are on thanksgiving 
and praise. And so as we come together, we, of course, part of our, our lives should be uh, given to giving thanks. And again, I'd like to thank the ladies <clears throat> this morning for these wonderful quilts that they presented. I just think it's really neat that we can honor our vets and all the work and the love that goes into this. Uh, I don't think we can ever show enough appreciation for those who serve and continue to serve. Anyway, 1 Corinthians 16.34, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And uh, one of the marks of, I believe, a growing Christian is in having an attitude of gratitude, that we have an attitude of giving thanks. Uh, just today, as I was on my way to church, I was thanking the Lord for the sunshine and then also for family and the opportunity to get together uh, with, with loved ones that maybe we don't get to see other than maybe once a year. Um, also, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So in our circumstances, even in the times of difficulty, even in the times of, of, of maybe health issues or financial issues or whatever, we give thanks in those times, in those times of circumstances, because we know that God is working, he's doing things, even though we don't understand sometimes, he is faithful and he continues to work and help us through these difficult times in our lives. And then hopefully at some point we're able to stop and, and see what God has done and give him praise. But even in the midst of a storm, in the midst of difficulties, we are to praise him. And uh, also in 13 here it says, The trumpeters and the musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord, uh, accomplished by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. The singers... <clears throat> raised their voices in praise to the Lord and saying, He is good. His love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud. So you can imagine having a time of praise together and then the, seeing the presence of God appearing in, in a cloud, a, a vapor, if you would, and in a sense of his presence. I remember as a kid in a church I grew up, they would burn incense and uh, that would be a representation of God in his presence. And, and as that incense, the smoke would go up, it was kind of a, it was like a picture of God's presence. I always thought as a kid that was kind of neat, that, that there was somehow a, a visualization of, of God's presence. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 says this, All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Corinthians 9, verse 11. If you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Being generous and giving thanks go hand in hand as we are able to serve God and be generous in helping others. And as we move into this um, Christmas season, uh, it is a time of year to, I think, go out of our way to share Jesus Christ. It's the ultimate gift, the ultimate praise that we can give the glory to God is when we share about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of all the different things that we may be going through, to be able to give out and to give back to others in some form. Then in uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse nine, uh, 19, from them will come songs of thanksgiving, and the sound of rejoicing, and I will add to their numbers, and there will be no decrease. I will bring them honor, and they will not be dismayed. So we see that as in the Old Testament and New Testament, how God was always working through his people and building in people's lives and giving them opportunities to bring glory to God. And, and again, in the early church, there was a lot of illiteracy. There wasn't a lot of uh, written literature that people had. They didn't have Bibles like we have, but they had the opportunity to themselves be living Bibles. I remember somebody saying one time many, many years ago that sometimes this is the only Bible some people may see. What you do and what I do through our lives and our testimonies in reaching out to people in our community, people around us, neighbors, friends. I remember getting running out of gas one holiday season. It was about two in the morning, and I was on the side of the road in Milwaukee coming up from Chicago to visit, and I was out of gas, and it was the middle of the night. And I remember somebody pulled up. They had a plow truck, and uh, they had me get in the truck, and he didn't have a gas can, and there were no gas, can, uh, gas stations open at that time. And I remember going in his car. We he took me all the way to his house. He picked up gas in a gas can, 
and drove me back to my car and helped me out. And I never forgot, I never, I don't remember his name, but whenever I think about him, I pray for him, and I think, and I, and I did get to share the Lord with him, uh, because, and that was really a neat opportunity. But you know, just things going out of our way sometimes, seeing what, what God is doing and giving us those opportunities, they're those little opportunities we have all around us. So, so my encouragement to you is you, we d- desire to share Jesus Christ, but we share it with reaching out to somebody, doing something, uh, an, an act of kindness, showing mercy. Uh, Psalm 9.1, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all you, of your wonderful deeds. And then Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I just want to stop right now and say if there's somebody who wants to share just a testimony or some praise, just stand up and we'll get a microphone to you. Don't be bashful. I'm thankful for the um, Wednesday night men's um, Bible study. Um, We're going through um, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. And I guess, you know, you always know that the Holy Spirit is God, co-equal with God, but a lot of times in my life, I always looked on kind of like as the lesser God. Um, but as I've gone through this Bible study, it's as I try to um, recognize the Holy Spirit and his ministry in the lives of believers and in the lives of the unsaved, it causes me at times to say, you know, recognize that the Holy Spirit is always with us, he's always around us, and he has a ministry. And he's always trying to bring us into um, a sanctification and a holiness which God wants for us. And it's really caused me um, to reflect on my life and you know, maybe some of my actions or some of my speech. And I'm really thankful for that ministry of the Holy Spirit and for the Wednesday night Bible studies. Thanks, Chris. Anybody else have something they'd like to share? A praise? Uh, you, if you've got a favorite verse or something you'd like to share? It's been on my heart uh, for quite some time to let Tom and Marianne know how precious they are in this congregation. Um, there's always a kind word from Marianne, a hug, and Tom is always so encouraging. And uh, I just thank you for, for all the service that you do for us. The Holy Spirit is definitely working through you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Something they want to share? Amy and I are coming up on our 25th wedding anniversary in January, so I'm thankful that she's put up with me for 25 years. Amen. <laughs> her, her grandparents are actually just celebrated their 77th wedding anniversary, so we got a ways to go. 77? 77, yeah. Wow. Amazing. I'm also thankful for our, our kids. You, know, you, you try to raise them the best you can, and I can conclude as I messed them up too much, but they're both, you know, very passionately following the Lord, which is something that, you know, they needed to take on themselves and not, you know, assume that they're okay because they're in a Christian household and all that. And so I'm just very proud of both her son and daughter. Her son Taylor is here with her his girlfriend, Hale, and her daughter, her daughter Tori is with her fiancé at their church this morning. But just very thankful for that because that's not a given. Thank you. We appreciate you guys too. Anybody else? Way in the back by the song booth. That's his wife. That's my wife. (laughs) (laughs) This better be really good with two mics. (laughs) Um, I just, first of all, want to thank this church. We just love everybody here. We just love this church family. Whenever I refer to our church, I refer to it as our church family. And, And also, I praise God for our family. We've been through, the last couple years have been really hard years for us, and I just praise God for my husband. I can't tell you what a rock he is. Oh my goodness, what you see is what you get. It's not, oh, he's different at home, or he's some maniac. He is what you see. (laughs) No, what you see, what you see is what you get. We get a little more of the crazy, funny, when he lets his hair down side, (laughs) but he is a, a 
a rock and he loves the Lord so much. And like I said, through the, through the things we've been through over the last few years, I, there's times mm. I've wanted to say, I can't do this anymore. But he, it's, he's amazing and it's because he relies on the Lord. Mm. And I just appreciate him so much. Okay, wow. <laughs> thanks, and thanks, honey. I love you too. Um, anybody else? Caleb, yeah. This is great. I just love it because you get to hear from me all the time, and I don't always get to hear from you, so I appreciate that. Yeah, um, this week has been interesting, and one of the verses that really came to mind is uh, Romans eight twenty six. It says, in the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Mm. And it's amazing to know that the Holy Spirit is there praying for us when we're Either we don't know how to or we're unable to pray. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you, Caleb. That's wonderful truth. God knows us, so we, can't even, we don't even know what to say or how to say it, but he does. Anybody else? I'm thankful for this exercise. Yeah. <laughs> to work off that turkey. I just wanted to say publicly that my husband and I, Ron, have noticed this Thanksgiving in particular that our four children who blended their lives at, at four, six, eight, and ten together have really, really bonded as siblings, and we really marvel at that, and that's God's doing. Amen. Appreciate you guys. I'm just going to read a few more scriptures, and we'll have a little more sharing, so you can be thinking, okay, as I read through the scriptures here of something maybe you'd like to share. Uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whatever in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. And then uh, Psalm 95, 2 and 3. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song, for the Lord is uh, the great God and the great King above all gods. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. I always thank my God for you because of the grace given you in Christ Jesus, for in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, I just uh, I just want to thank you too, Marianne. We got to thank you. she got to thank you, but I thank you as a congregation too. We have so many people here who are faithful prayer warriors and who give and serve behind the scenes, doing so many things, and it really is an honor and a joy. Whenever I come here on Sunday mornings, especially, I come in every every week, every day, and I pray. I like to come in here. I walk around here and I pray for all of you for the people who have been here, the people who are here, and the people who will come, who God will bring here. I do that every day almost. Uh, But driving here on Sunday mornings, I always thank God for the privilege of being able to be part of this church, for the privilege of being here and being able to minister. It really is an honor and a privilege. And uh, in the midst of all the different things that I know so many of you are going through, so many different things in your life right now, that God is so faithful and he is such a good God, and I'm, I'm very thankful. And as I just have to say thanks to my wife, Mary Ann, who is, she says I'm a rock, but she ultimately, I could not do what I do without her. And men, most of us, would, I'm sure, would say the same thing. Uh, without our wives, we, didn't know what, we don't know what we'd be doing <laughs> most of the time. But I am very thankful for my family as well. Let's, uh, let me just continue to read a few more here. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, and 12. You have been enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity it will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. One of the things we've been studying on the Holy Spirit and learning how to uh, appreciate the Holy Spirit is the fact that from Uh, Jesus Christ is the vine, we are the branches. And so Christ being the vine, he provides everything as we abide in him. We're the branch that's been grafted into the vine. And as the Holy Spirit is the sap that flows from the vine 
through the branch. The branch doesn't bear fruit in itself. It is the sap that bears the fruit. God bears the fruit through us. So it is through the overflow of what God is doing in our lives as we remain in him, as we abide in him, as we walk with him. God does all the work. We just get to be part of all that God is doing. And what a wonderful truth that is, is to realize it's not up to us. We can't bear fruit in ourselves. It is up to Christ. Our only job ultimately is to remain in him, to walk with him and to seek him and allow the spirit of God to work in and through our lives. When that is going on, there's natural fruit. And, and there's nothing more exciting than to know that you're bearing fruit in your life because people are acknowledging the fruit in your life one way or another. And it can be simple things, but just showing kindness and generosity to people, I think is one of the greatest ways that fruit of the spirit can flow out through us. And so by your faithfulness and praying for the church, giving to this ministry, uh, serving on so many different levels, telling people about Jesus, what a great opportunity we have. And this is the season to do that. Uh, just a few more verses, and I will share for a few more minutes. Ephesians chapter 1, 15 and 16. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. And that's how we feel about you as a congregation. We give thanks to the Lord for you continually. And I just want to say thanks to the leaders of the church, the men who are elders in this church, to them and their wives for what they do behind the scenes here continually. Uh, they are prayer warriors and, and they are faithful men and I'm so thankful for them. And also the deacons and their wives, the things that they do in the church serving on so many different levels. There's so many things that you, you, know, you never even think and realize that go on around here, but I'm very thankful uh, for these individuals and their faithfulness in serving the Lord. It really is an honor and a joy to work with them and to work alongside of them and to know that these guys spend a lot of time in prayer and seeking God's will and protecting the church and caring for this congregation. And I'm very, very thankful for all of you. So thank you. Um, uh, one more, and then we'll turn it over for a little more sharing. Um, Psalm 7, uh, 17. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing praises of the name of the Lord the Most High. So if we have a, any more, anyone like to share a couple more testimonies? Share something. Oh, geez. That caught me by surprise. Uh, <laughs> I just want to thank, I know we kind of got recognized last week, but I personally just want to ta take a time to thank my worship team. Um, I, I'm on staff here. I get paid to do what I do. They don't. Um, I organize everything, and they show up every week super faithfully, and help me to bring you into God's presence every morning. Um, for me, it's ultimately super rewarding when I'm up here leading you guys to see you guys worshiping uh, with me and with us. But ultimately, I want to thank my worship team for just being faithful every week. I know there's weeks where you can't come, but just thank you. It, I couldn't do what I'm doing without you guys backing me up every week. So Amen. thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else over here? Ron. I don't know how many of you actually know me, but when my wife and me got married and we were searching for a church, I'd been in another church for a lot of years, and we went to different churches, and then we sat, I brought all the kids, we were all in a row over there, and I'm sitting, and he's giving a service, and he, here's two things he said. He said, one, that would be like, and I don't know what the whole contents was, because I don't remember the part that was valuable to me. <laughs> he said, it'd be like going to the Daytona 500 and not thinking you got to make a pit stop. And what he was talking about was uh, about how you really got to plan and, and make these things. And the way he said it, I'm thinking, wow, that's a guy that kind of talks my language because I <laughs> used to race cars. And then another thing he said, like the second time we came, which is what was deciding, the deciding thing for me, is he said, well, that's kind of like putting diesel in a gas car. <laughs> and I thought, that's the guy I got I to gotta, I gotta keep coming to this church. That may be not the best reason for what all you would think. But since that time... I have heard him say very little, that was two times in a row, I've heard him say very little about automotive stuff, other than when you talk to him personally, like at the car shows we had and stuff, but really, so I think that was from the Lord for me. So, thank you. Amen. Thank everybody. Yeah. Everybody here is good. 
I'm just thankful for the fellowship of all the people that are here that come every week and that, that share with us, that pray, that make this congregation what it is because, you know, this is really special. We have a lot of friends here. We really enjoy the people here and just the faithfulness and the prayer and the, the I think the shepherding that Pastor Tom does is amazing because when we came to this church, that was the thing that really touched my heart was the fact that he shepherded his people and he was here for people that needed him and that's huge. Anybody else? The thing that I'm probably thankful for most of all is the security that I have being a child of God, knowing that no matter what happens in my life, no matter what mountains I have to climb, what rivers I have to cross, I have that that faith that God is in control, God knows what he's doing, and he's not going to give me anything, give me anything more that I can't handle. He's with me the whole way, mm-hmm. and because of that, I, there's nothing I have to worry about, and there's so many people in the world that don't have that kind of security, don't have that kind of faith. I'm just so thankful that uh, the Spirit has revealed that to me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you. That's awesome. Coming from a younger person in our congregation to hear his heart before the Lord, that's awesome. Thanks. Anybody else? And we'll just... Um, I just want to say I'm thankful for um, the KMC Church and the family here. Um, three years ago, I came from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and married my husband. <laughs> and Tom married us, and I wanted a place that I could feel like I'm at home, and I do feel like I'm at home here. So I'm very thankful for that. One more, and uh... thanks. Um, things that I'm thankful for is actually quite a bit here, but my son is uh, kind of a living proof of what I am thankful for. Um, about four years ago, a lot of people, some people knew because they were able to help out, went through a pretty serious illness, and then um, went through a divorce after that. And it was just the thankfulness that I have is how the Lord walked me through everything and how the Holy Spirit was there and how it was very comforting and kind of tying into the verse uh, in that um, was read is Hebrews 4.16 and this was something that I really held dear through all these tribulations that I was going through and it says let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need and it's really you know, the confidence that we have in the Lord to know that he knows our heart, you know, as the Holy Spirit can utter those prayers. And it was just, when I was angry, I could yell and scream at God. And he already knew that, and that's what he wanted me to release those frustrations and pains that I had and knowing that he was there to take them. But I had to let him go and give them to him. And it's just that verse is very, think, you know, strong for me, just the whole boldness that we have. He is our Father. Mm. You know, here he knows it. He just wants us to let him have it. So, thanks. Thanks, Joel. Well, I'm just going to share a few more verses, and we're going to close with a song. Uh, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. Also from Psalm, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Jeremiah 33, 11. The sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring drink offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the the Lord is good, his love endures forever, for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. We have so much to look forward to. We're thankful for the country we live in, but we have so much to be thankful for this day, for the freedom we have, for the chance we have to come together. And uh, we're going to have the worship team come up, and we'll just uh, close uh, with a song together. And uh, I just want to say one more thing. I'm very thankful for my grandchildren, Trent and Madeline. Uh, We got to spend some time with them this weekend, and it's just neat to see what great kids they are and what God is doing in their lives and uh, their uh, testimony for the Lord. So thank you everyone for sharing. It was wonderful hearing from you. I just want you to know too that the person of Jesus Christ is the whole reason we can give thanks for anything. His death, burial, and resurrection, his shed blood on the cross of Calvary is what makes it possible for us to know him 
and to truly be able to give thanks. So thank you for all for sharing this morning. And if you ever have any questions about how to know Christ, just come to me or one of the elders. We'd love to talk to you more about understanding how simple it is to take that step to put the tr- your trust in Christ. And it's simply by acknowledging you're a sinner, that he's the Savior who came to take your place and pay for your sin. And it's a free gift, the best gift ever. So let, thank you so much for this day. You're dismissed. And if you could help stay, some of you to help set up with the Christmas decorations, we'd appreciate it. Thank you.